We're just coming up into Wheaton Aston now. I can see the boats moored up on the linear moorings here on the offside. Uh, Simon and myself want, both want to get fuel, want to get a couple of bags of coal, some blue and some bits and bobs. And then we want to moor up and uh, help celebrate Noah's seventh birthday today. He's really excited, he's having fun with his Auntie Tracy in the boat. Uncle Simon is steering the boat uh, and it does feel weird. Um, I've just said to Nikki, it's weird uh, not having the kids on board, but they, they love Simon and Tracy uh, so much. Uh, it's going to be sad for all of us to say goodbye tomorrow. But I know they're coming down to Crick on the Sunday to come and see us, uh, obviously in their car. So uh, it'll be great to see them, but really enjoyed their company. It's been a special day. And here is a chap that we helped out with uh, our magnets. Uh, yesterday, I think, he dropped one of his nappy pins into the canal, so we helped him out. Lovely chap called Ian. And a beautiful boat. How are you, Ian? Hi, Gary. Good. All right, mate. You having fun? Have you lost anything lately? <laughs> I bought a magnet. <laughs> I it last night. Well done. Take care, mate. We're moored up in Wheaton Aston. Uh, the fuel point was uh, closed. It's Good Friday and we forgot about that. Went forward, uh, filled up with water, got rid of the rubbish and I've reversed. Uh, Simon's winded, so he's pointing the right way to return to Norbury Junction tomorrow. Little Noah has had a great day. They're playing there and obviously Lily got some presents as well, skipping ropes and stuff. Kids are having fun with bubbles and everything else. He's so excited. And tonight we've got popcorn. We're going to have a movie night and make it a special day for him. Um, he's a marvellous little boy. He, he really is. He's the most caring little boy you'd ever meet. We've had a marvellous day. It's going to be a sad day tomorrow to say goodbye to Simon and Tracy. Not looking forward to that. There will be tears. Um, he's like a brother to me. He really is. Um, love that man. Um, yeah. Memorable day, memorable times, uh, great. The trip continues tomorrow. See you folks. That's it, sun's out, it's lovely and warm. We've got fuel just under there, and I've got to say, what the most friendliest chap helped us out there. Uh, we got fuel uh, and some blue and another bottle of gas, because we're running a little bit low on gas. Um, but I'm just in the queue here now, we've just topped up with water again because we've done a load of washing, had showers, um, yes, we've cleaned the kids. Uh, but we're in a queue here now for this lock. Uh, Phil on the boat in front is just hovering for his wife to open the gates and then he's going to go in. And then uh, I'll get on the lock landing and give them a hand. Yeah, it's going to be a nice day. Here we go, into the one lock here at uh, Wheaton Aston. It's a nice little easy one. Except when you have fishermen on the lock landing. Yeah, I've seen a lot more of this. We see it quite a lot now, fishermen on the lock landing. There's signs everywhere telling them not to. Um, a couple of years ago, I was going through Turley Locks. I was coming down through Turley Locks. And there was two fishermen on a lock landing. I was single-handed. Thank you. I was single-handed. Um, I had no choice. I needed to use the lock landing. Uh, the first fisherman, there was two of them, the first fisherman saw me, lifted the rod and everything else out of the way. The second one didn't. I had to moor up. There was carbon fibre, bits of metal, lots of swearing. Yeah, he broke his rod and the rod holder or something. So words were exchanged. Not my fault, I'm afraid. I had to moor up. The sign's everywhere and I pointed it out to him. Just shouldn't be doing it. I do actually enjoy seeing fishermen. Um, I enjoy seeing people using the waterways, and we all should, but there are certain rules that need to be followed. Um, 
yeah, you can't go shouting at me if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. So uh, it was one of those, not to worry. And we have made the most of some of that timber. We broke a little bit up, we're not holding anyone up. Uh, ideal for fire pit. That is all the locks behind us. Well, that one lock behind us. We have one more on the Shropshire Union to do, but that won't be today. That's the little stop lock down at Orderly Junction. So we're just heading now through the beautiful Lap Lee cutting. Oh, yeah. That was really nice. Gentlemen on that boat you can see behind, you'll know who you are, I didn't get names or anything, but he says he watches the channel and enjoys it, so that was nice, yeah, really nice. It makes it, it does make it worthwhile when people say hello, I do enjoy it, it is my diary, but makes it, makes it worthwhile when people enjoy it, yeah. This is heaven. These beautiful brick, brick bridges here, in the middle of nowhere, but look at the care that's taken to, to build them. Absolutely wonderful. And we're just coming up now to the lovely Stretton Wharf. You can usually see some beautiful old working boats here. And then immediately after we're on Stretton Aqueduct, one of Thomas Telford's masterpieces. There's an example there of some of the old working boats that are cared for here at Stretton Wharf. Beautiful old boats. Absolutely wonderful. I wonder what stories they could tell of the crews and the places where they've been. Love it. I always like cruising past here. You never know what you see. And look at little Samson. What a beautiful little tugboat of some description. I, I really don't know. Isn't that lovely? Look at that. <laughs> Now we're coming to Stretton Aqueduct, a uh, lovely aqueduct. It spans old Watling Street, or what is now uh, known now as um, the A5. Uh, it's a road I've travelled many times. Um, yeah, the aqueduct always looked beautiful from the road, but I've got to be honest, it doesn't look so beautiful now from the canal. I'll never understand why the CRT don't put a li bit, little bit more tender loving care into this beautiful piece of history. It always looks a bit messy, if I'm honest. Such a shame. Yeah, it always looks like all it needs is a good sand down, a good uh, seeing tour with some sandpaper and lovely nice new lick of paint. It would look wonderful, but sadly, it's not looking too clever now. Such a shame, it could be beautiful. It wouldn't take much, surely, to do it up. It's a wonderful little aqueduct. You can imagine the work that's gone into it back in the day. Now, simply, it just looks a bit of a mess. Well, just been past two more subscribers, Drew and Carol. Uh, I hope it was Carol. Was it Karen or Carol? My hearing isn't very good. When you're stood on the back of a boat, it's difficult. They've got beautiful boats and they watch the channel. And there they are, on the way up to the beautiful Flangothlin, which we are going to do later this year. I don't know when, it'll probably be autumn. And hopefully, uh, Simon and Tracy are coming with us for that trip. So we are looking forward, we're excited uh, for that. And we do have plans for next year as well, so keep watching. Hi. 
Hi. Give us a wave. not far away from Brood now. I can see a bridge right in the distance. Well, when I use my monocular, I can. Uh, there's a bridge right in the distance. I'd like to go onto that bridge and find a moor in between that bridge and the next bridge. You're really handy there for the town of Brood. Uh, so we've got a few linear moorings here. Countrywide cruisers, the hire boat company are there by the winding hole under the bridge and then hopefully we're mooring up. And there is the hire boat company Countrywide Cruisers. They seem to have quite a fleet really. I've seen quite a few of their boats about and they do look well maintained as well. We're moored up exactly where we wanted to be, right in the middle of the two bridges here in Brood. It's a lovely place, uh, good shops, nice little pub. Uh, really nice and look we've got a picnic table here which is great because we're planning on doing a barbecue so uh, there's some nice bricks to put the barbecue on we're not going to do any damage and we've got some rather iffy looking seating but uh, it'll do the job uh, so yes brewed for a couple of days uh, looking forward to it uh, go and explore the town uh, once again and we're booked in for a Sunday dinner tomorrow up there at the bridge inn so that'll be really nice to celebrate Easter so uh, That'll be great. Let's see what happens. Well, it's a lot later. It's 25 to 5. We've stoked up the barbecue. It's going to be a while before that goes. But uh, I do have to apologise to all the moorers here at Brood this afternoon. But of course, that will stop when the barbecue gets going. Yeah, it's going to take a while for this to kick in. Got to put a bit more charcoal on it and everything. And let it burn down to them white cinders and then we can start cooking. But we have got loads of firewood. Have a look at this. We grabbed a bit at uh, Wheaton Aston Lock, but we had a load anyway. Uh, little Noah, no, it wasn't, no, uh, was Noah, but... Um, and Auntie Tracy. Auntie Tracy mm -hmm. uh, got a load of kindling um, and wood before, so uh, last night or the night before. So we're good to go. We'll turn it into a fire pit, as long as we can keep our eyes open. We're all a bit tired. It's, uh, yeah, this is magical. Up to now, Nikki's left me in charge of cooking. I've got some lamb steaks on here and they do smell lovely. I hope she comes out and checks them. Good morning, and it is absolutely beautiful here at Brood this morning. It's Sunday, the 17th of April. It's actually uh, Easter Sunday, and we've got quite a bit planned today. We're going out for lunch at the Bridge Inn, which is just up there at one o'clock. We have a table booked, so we're gonna have a lovely roast dinner. Uh, and then we're moving that way, a little bit further down, uh, towards a beautiful ornate bridge called uh, Avenue Bridge. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about it when we get a bit nearer, but we've got more there for the night. Uh, the kiddie's going to do an Easter egg hunt. The Easter bunny is coming down there later on. Uh, they've already had a bit of an egg and an Easter bunny, little cuddly toy and everything, so uh, they're having a ball. I'm about to get some toast. That will be my breakfast. But yeah, looking forward to today. The sun's shining, so it's going to be a good one. No, it's it's many look like that, darling. Thank you. Yeah, thank much. you. That's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. No, that's lovely. Thank you very much. Well, trying some of it. You like trees? We used to have trees all the time. 
Well, that's it. I'm back in my comfy place. I've got my boots on, my hat on, and I'm on the tiller of chugs. Uh, we're only heading down to Bridge 10 uh, Avenue Bridge. I think this bridge I'm coming up to is 13. Uh -huh. Yep, th Bridge 13. So we haven't got far to go at all. Uh, and then we're looking forward to mooring up in the countryside. Uh, and of course, we'll share it with you when we get there. But uh, yeah, thank you, Brood. You looked after us again. Uh, great place to stop and have a look around. We are just coming up to the very beautiful Avenue Bridge, Bridge 10 on the Shropshire Union. It was built to access Chillington Hall, uh, a lovely stately home up here, and they granted permission for the navvies to cut, sort of cut through and dig through their land, providing they built ornate bridges uh, so they could access their property. And they certainly pushed the boat out, so as to speak, with Avenue Bridge. What an amazing bridge it is. It looks absolutely breathtaking. A lot of the bridges on the Shropshire Union are pretty boring, but this one really stands out. Chillington Hall itself is owned by the Gifford family, and it's been their property for over 800 years. What a beautiful structure that is.